Do you fireproof costumes? How? <laughs> Hi everybody! So, I've been in the midst of making costumes, but I'm just about to be in my blackout period of the year where I design a show, like a full out show, but it's actually an opera, and my training was mostly in theater, and opera is a form of theater, but it's still different, very different from like musical theater or just straight up theater. I thought it might be cool to answer some questions that people have about being a costume designer. And while I'm not the most seasoned of designers, as I live in little old Arkansas, we do have some culture here. We do have a thriving arts community, uh, of course not to the level of any of the major cities. But when I graduated college, I realized that I did not want to move to New York which I guess had been the primary plan, but I had met my husband and I wanted to start a family. So we decided to settle down in Northwest Arkansas and it's not as easy to find shows to design here, but I realized that I love doing historical reenactment and cosplay costumes and I like to design, but I didn't want to design for shows all year long. I just wanted to do one a year. And so the cool thing was my friend was going to be starting a nonprofit opera company in Fayetteville and she flies singers in from all over the United States and it's, it's so awesome to get this opportunity to do it. So this will have this will be the fifth year in the in a row that I have uh, helped them design a show and we're pretty small, so I'm a one-woman costume department, and I'm able to do a lot of things in a really short amount of time because I only have about two months from start to finish to get everybody uh, to get everybody fitted. I mean, measured, uh, order the stuff or build the stuff, and create renderings, like do all the stuff. So I thought it'd be cool. I'm just gonna answer some questions about costume design. Let's see, I've designed around 10 shows or something like that, total, 10 to 15. I've done little things here and there as well as bigger shows, and of course I had a couple of ones in college that I had done. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, first question is, you the costume designer have just been signed on to a show, where do you start? The first thing that I do when I'm signed onto a show is I like to either listen to the material, read the material, anything that has to do with that so I understand the show that I'm going to be doing. Even if I have a preconceived notion of the show, I still like to go back and read through the entire thing and I make any notes, I break it down by scene and um, act, act and scene, and I make any notes in the text to any references on age, on what they're wearing, on the season, on the location, the time period, uh, you know, whether they have red hair or, you know, any descriptors whatsoever that could influence what they're wearing. And also any, any personality things that stick out to me because Part of costume design is also taking in consideration what their, what the goal of that character is, what they're trying to portray, because that's also going to be reflected in their costume. And a lot of people don't realize that. Some people think that you just put them in clothing that looks good. And while sometimes you want to do that, it's still largely dependent on who that character is. Like who, and you're actually telling a story through their clothing as well as 
the way that they act and the way that they're directed and you know also lighting and state all of it works together to create that character so once I go through that I usually expect to have some sort of meeting with a director and any other artistic um, art like design people and we kind of just listen to what the director's vision is, what kind of thoughts that they have on the characters and the setting and all of that stuff. Sometimes they'll want to do a play or a show in a completely different time period than the one that is traditionally done for the show. And that's always interesting, but it's something super important that you need to know in order to design once you have that meeting. So after that, I get to work on researching. So I will go to libraries, um, check out art books and uh, you know costume books and research that time period. You'll find a lot of you'll find a lot of really good references in art from that period because you know there's a lot of things there like traditional day wear. Um, you know, special occasion stuff that you could find there that you wouldn't actually find in like fashion plates of an uh, earlier magazine or just in a costume history book. And so that was my primar primary thing. Also stories, just um, like whenever I was uh, designing Into the Woods for a costume design project, uh, I looked at a lot of fairy tale books and a lot of the illustrations there and I got a lot of inspiration from there because that's not a specific time period. It's more of just like archetype of care types of characters that we know. So that's also a really good place. Uh, and then of course we have the internet and I have, well let me back up, I have a lot of costume history books to give me basic information on silhouette, on underclothing, on things that they traditionally did or didn't do. I like to be pretty accurate, although with stage you're not going to be 100% accurate because sometimes you need to cheat things in order to make it look good on stage. So, And then we have the internet and I love Pinterest because I can just start pinning, making a visual, digital visual corkboard basically and I can pull from you know archive websites from art like I was saying all sorts of places and I can I don't let this um, determine what I'm gonna design for a show but I like to see sometimes what other shows have done and see what their takes on things have been but it's good to see other feedback or like see um, things that they thought of that maybe I wouldn't have I just feel like it's a really good amalgamation of things sorry <laughs> <laughs> That's a chocobo and it's a text tone and I'm so sorry because you probably hear that a thousand times. Yeah, Pinterest is a super great tool and you know I go from there and then once I get all of that information put together I start to envision what the character is going to look like. And so that's when I do renderings, if I have time, most of the time I do. If it's contemporary and I'm not super particular on items of clothing, it's more of like an idea, then I don't do it, but typically I do renderings, very helpful for me. So that's where I go and then on to building. How do you manage your time when you're working on a play? Well. Uh, one of the first things I do after the research period is over, and usually I give myself a limited amount of time to work on the research, like a week, week and a half or so, is usually the amount of time I, I can even give myself research for what I'm doing because my time frame to get this done is so, so tight. So after I uh, design the show, I get the okay from the director, um, I just start... Even if you're doing a historical show, sometimes you can find things at thrift stores that will work for, you know. Like one time we did Little Women and I was trying to get, the, I was trying to, I built a couple of dresses but I did not have time to build everything so I bought some but then I was walking through the thrift store and I saw a bed skirt. And I was like, hmm, I'm making multi-layered, uh, frilly, uh, bell-shaped dresses because this is during the 1860s. So I got the bed skirt and it ended up being an underlayer for 
because it already had gathered ruffles and the, the color was great, the fabric was great, so I used that as the underlayer of the skirt. <laughs> so you can find all sorts of things there. And um, as far as time management, I do as much as I can once I have all that laid out and once it starts getting closer and closer, I know that I need to hurry my butt up and somehow I just do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's really close to what it needs to happen, but being a one woman uh, show, designer, cutter, draper, uh, purchaser, everything, sometimes it gets a little hectic. When I do have assistance, oh man, so nice. So nice. I've mainly done small shows where that's a luxury I don't really have. So. How do you prepare for meetings? I kind of already answered this question. Uh, the primary meeting, I don't really bring anything except for the notes that I've made from watching or listening to the piece. Um, and then the secondary meeting is basically renderings or just really detailed descriptions of like what I'm envisioning for that character. And then after that, I mean, it's really just uh, setting updates of pictures of, you know, questions, stuff like that. So um, other more seasoned Designers might have more stringent, more exa extravagant things that they do, but that's, that's what I do. How do you make your budget? I don't really. I just give feedback on to, as to how much I think something's going to cost. I mean, I take into account how many people there are in the play or the show, and um, I take into account what time period because that also greatly affects the budget of the show. And then also I make sure that I get paid a little bit. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not like making bank during this, but um, I do make, I make money as well. So I guess I'm tech, I'm a professional designer. Uh, but I just make sure that um, I have some cushion room with all those things. And uh, yeah, where do I do most of my work? Do you share space with anyone? Well, I do most of my work in this room. I've also taken over our other spare room for storage and stuff like that. If I need anyone, to, this is a new space, so this will be the first year that I've done a show where I have a cutting table and all that stuff, but I don't have as much floor space. So fitting all of the, I have racks in here with all the costumes and I usually um, put dividers on them with the character's name and the actor or singer's name. Um, and if I ever get someone to help me, which one year my friend, who was also a theater major, uh, directing, but she can sew as well, came and helped me um, meet some deadlines. And I have my other sewing machine in the commission, but I don't right now and I don't know what I'm going to do if I need to help. I need to go, I know I tell you this in every f single freaking video, I need to find somebody that can fix my sewing machine that isn't exorbitantly expensive. Ugh. Where do you get your fabrics and other costuming materials? I get my stuff online. I go to the regular fabric stores, Joann's, Hancock, Hobby Lobby, because that's all we have around here. Um, I'll look on eBay or Etsy if it's like a specialty fabric that I have to have. And the only other place, like I said, is like thrift stores or, you know, things like that where you can get like sheets or bed skirts that you can use as fabric sometimes. Are there any particular colors that have particular effects on stage? Man, I haven't had to deal with this very much for a long time, but I can tell you that with white, you don't typically use straight up white because it reads very like glaring. So a lot of times you'll pick a slightly off white to put up on stage, especially if it's like a period show. You don't typically put brilliant, I mean, blinding white on stage. I mean, it would be really cool if you were doing something with the lighting where they could play with that. Um, other things, uh, you don't pick uh, garish colors unless that's what the character requires because usually that doesn't mesh very well with other characters. Um, and really you just look at the color palette in general. Uh, a lot of times I have 
a certain idea of what I want the show or what the director has told me the show they want to portray. So the color scheme kind of falls in place with that too. Do you use patterns and where do you get them? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I mean, there's a whole bunch of store-bought patterns and ones I've gotten online that I just, I hoard them as I've told you before. Because I feel like if a pattern has a basic shape that you want, what is the point of drafting it from scratch, which takes longer? Um, but I do also draft from scratch depending on the needs of the costume. So I really, I go both ways. And sometimes I just drape on my dress form. Uh, I do all three ways because, I mean, you never know what you're gonna need. You just have to adjust to fit uh, what you're doing, so. What are all the steps that go into making a single costume? Do you have to have any advice, do you have any advice for making large amounts of costumes in a limited amount of time? Well, <laughs> get assistance if you can, but also uh, if you can, thrift and buy as much as you can within your budget. I mean, only build things that you are not gonna find anywhere else that um, you really can't replicate any other way because it's more expensive and time consuming to build from scratch. So, I mean, buy what you can, rent what you can. That was another thing I didn't talk about. Is sometimes you can rent costumes. Like for the show coming up, I know for a lot of the men's costumes, I'm going to be renting because I do not have that amount of time to tailor, you know, coats and stuff like that, uh, period specific ones. So that's, that's another thing if you have a lot of costumes to do really quickly. Last year, we had a chorus of um, 30 people-ish. No, no, no. The whole show was like 35 people. The children's chorus was about 20 or something like that. That's a lot of people to costume. So, I mean, you just want to use whatever you can. When do you get actors' measurements? How do you arrange to get these? Well, like I said, when... Like I said at the beginning of the video, we have singers that come in from all over the country. So a lot of times they will have already been in a show and they already have a page of measurements that they can just email to me that they've already had scanned and that are pretty are recent enough for me to have. Um, but I also just send out a list of measurements that I need and I usually tell them that they need to get somebody else that has experience with those types of things to measure them because a lot of times um, they can measure themselves wrongly or in the wrong sp So I just I recommend this. So usually they'll email, email them to me. That's pretty much the only way. Um, sometimes if they're, if they're local or closer, I can go measure them, but that's the basic gist of it. Um, all the measurements I need, I usually use Unless I know I need something super specific from them. I usually use the measurement sheet in this because this is basically costume technician's <laughs> Bible. This and then the costume designer designer's handbook also is super um, handy. You definitely need an iron and an ironing board. You cannot survive without those things and still sew. Um, gosh, what other materials? Sometimes I use my grommet press. Sometimes I use um, my awl, boning, uh, elastic, all sorts of, like basically everything that's in the fabric store. <laughs> and some things that aren't in the fabric store. Carbon paper, um, what else? Silamide, my rotary cutter, my triangle, like all this, oh, gridded ruler, that's a big one. Um, basically every snaps, I mean everything, basically everything that you can think of. How do you suit costumes to fit the physical activity or specific type of movement that they'll be used for? Well, that's easy because you just think about what that character is and what they're doing. Like last year we did The Little Prince. There was the character of the fox. She's like hopping around everywhere. Um, she's doing like a lot of physical activity. So instead of making like a long drapey thing that she would like trip over or whatever, I just made it 
pretty form fitting, uh, a stretchy material so she could easily hop around. They let you know if the shoes are comfortable and basically that's all you have to think of. Like I also designed the water for that show and the water had to have a shawl that, you know, when it, when it moved it had to have that water flowing quality. So. The shawl was made out of chiffon and that's some, that's a fabric that's really floaty and watery so um, you just have to think of what that character requires and it's actually pretty easy um, to accommodate that stuff. Do you test out ideas? How? Do you recommend watching rehearsals? Absolutely. Absolutely go to first dress, second dress, like all of the dress rehearsals if you can because you're going to notice things different every time and you're gonna realize what works, what doesn't, what looks like crap on stage, what needs to be replaced. Um, the actors are, or singers are gonna get in there and be like, well, this doesn't work for me, or like this is getting caught then, or this quick change is too fast. You absolutely have to go to those things and see what the needs are. Do you fireproof costumes? How? can't say I ever needed to. I'm sure there are shows where they have like, they have stage cigarettes and stuff that don't even really require to be lit, so. Uh, I don't fireproof them. I don't know how to fireproof them. I assume there's some sort of spray or some fabrics are naturally flame retardant, but. Do you have any advice for making it easier to quick change? Yes. So a quick change is when an actor or singer is on stage and they come off and they have to get into another costume like super fast. So this is like five minutes or less, like somewhere in that area. Sometimes I've had only like a minute, over a minute to get um, somebody changed. So what you want to do, if you can, is have dressers backstage with things already primed, ready to put on or help take off. So you want to have multiple ones if you can and you need to choreograph who does what so you're not like fumbling over each other. And also you're going to want to make the costumes where it's easy to take on and off, um, you know, just depending on what they're doing, like what kinds of clothing they are. And um, you also want to train the actor or the singer on what they need to do as soon as they come off, um, how to make it successful. So I feel like those are the main things that you want to do to have a successful quick change. How do you deal with the wear and tear when the play is up? Uh, well, most of the stuff I've designed for d doesn't run for that long. So I don't really have to worry about that much. If there is wear and tear during the show, I'll just come in and fix whatever needs to be fixed. Then afterward, I do sell some pieces and I make sure those are fixed before I sell them, but everything else just goes into costume storage and then if I use them again, I'll just fix it whenever I use it again. Where do you clean the costumes? How do you arrange it? Well, like I said, our shows don't usually last long. Whenever I did shows in college, our shows would last a couple of weeks. So for that, we'd have to do laundry. We'd have to iron and press, all that stuff. But for these shows, um, all I do is Febreze. I will wash under things. I'll take them home at night if I need need to. Um, and then I'll press there. I usually bring my steamer or iron, so. What are some particularly different challenges you've encountered and how have you dealt with them? Well, okay, so the biggest challenge that I've ever encountered was the first show I did with the opera, and I did not know this at the time because I had not designed for an opera, but opera singers can't sing multiple nights in a row. So for the first opera we did, we double cast every role. So, but the budget made it to where both of those people needed to fit in the same costume. I mean, we ended up ended up not being able to do that with the men because their discrepancy in sizes between each role was too great for me to deal with. So we just rented their costumes separately. But for the women, I could not afford to have multiple costumes for each um, women's role. So what I had to do was like rig different ways for the for two different women to fit into one costume and one of the 
one of the rolls, there's like a pretty big difference in their sizes. So just figuring out how to make it fit both people, and some things are impossible, but luckily it was during Little Women, so um, there was a lot of gathers and, and not super form-fitting stuff. So I was able to do it, but I want to say that that's probably, and there were, you know, there's a bunch of rolls, there are like 15 rolls or something, so that's 30 people. And doing that all by yourself in only a couple months, yeah. That was difficult, but I did it. I don't know how, but I did. The last question. In your experience, what is something you wish you had known earlier? Huh. I feel like the thing I wish I had known earlier was that no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, no matter, you know, how close it is until first dress or the first show or whatever, you're gonna pull it out, like, and not in a weird way, <laughs> but you're gonna, you're gonna get there. I mean, all the shows I've worked on and all the shows that I've actually designed, we've always made it. Like, maybe it wasn't 100% perfect when we, you know, did, you know, started first dress or whatever, but we always seem to make it there at the end and get everybody costumed and the first time everyone has their clothes and makeup on, you're just like, you look around and you're just like, oh my god, this is so awesome. Putting beautiful or interesting or sad or, you know, any sort of emotion that it brings, art, into the world and, you know, costumes are part of that story. I feel like it has worth and I feel like... A world without art wouldn't be as okay as people think it would. Yes, we could probably live without it, but life would be a little more boring. I mean, I don't know, that's how I feel about it. Sorry, I got real deep there. <laughs> that's all the questions that I have for this frequently asked questions of costume designer. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm hoping to post more tutorials here soon um, as I'm going through the show. Hopefully I'll have some things that I come across that I think you guys might want to learn. But as always, if you have comments, leave them below, questions, anything you want to learn how to do. I'd love to let you know how to do it or learn how to do it and show you. Um, but anyway, like this video if you liked it and subscribe to me. I'm trying to put out a video every week, but it, I mean, there's going to be an ebb and flow because of the amount of craziness I'm in, so. Anyway, um, farewell lovelies. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I'll talk to you later.